Hi, I'm Miss Kelly, and I'm the 4-H agent here in Columbia County. And hi, I'm Miss Karen, and I'm the 4-H educator. We hope you enjoyed The Sunflower House by Eve Bunting. It's a great story, wasn't it? Each week in Sprouts, we'll be doing a hands-on horticultural project after we read the book, and it's going to be related back to that story and the big idea for that particular session. Today's big idea is that plants grow from seeds and that seeds come from flowers. So today we're going to be making a biodegradable seed tape, and this is a clever way of planting, sowing seeds so that you have just the minor out of, right amount of seeds and they're at their correct spacing. So for today's project, you're going to need some newsprint. You're also going to need a ruler and a pencil or a pen. You will also need a Ziploc bag, just like this, some scissors, a toothpick, a little bit of flour, so two tablespoons of just all-purpose flour that you'd have in your kitchen as well as a little bit of water. You'll also need a spoon as well. And um, Elmer's glue um, is optional. We'll show you both ways of how we're gonna do this with uh, flour and water and then with glue. And then you're also going to need some sunflower seeds. And we have two different varieties here. And I will talk a little bit more about um, these particular seeds when we get to that point, all right? All right, so. The first thing that we are going to do is we are going to um, cut out our tape. And so by tape, I don't mean like sticky tape. Miss Karen thought I meant tape earlier. It's kind of confusing. It's more of a strip. So you're going to cut out a strip of newspaper. Metaphorically all right? speaking. <laughs> so you can do it two different ways. Um, I'm just going to fold this over in half. You do want a fairly long piece of newspaper um, to space out your seeds. So, a little so it's bit just a, it's just a little, just one piece of paper out of the newspaper. And Miss Karen, she did more of a little accordion style. That and way, it was kind of pre, kind of shaped, so I'd know how I was doing my numbers. Yep. So the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut out a strip, and you want to make sure um, there's really no set size, but I would say you want to make sure that it's at least an inch wide. I'm going to do two inches wide um, with that, and we're going to mark it. So Ms. Karen's gonna cut hers, but I'll show you how I would do it. So I'm gonna cut it in half, or I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm going to measure and out. this is a way that you can do it if you don't have scissors handy or can't find them. Measure out two inches, so about right here. And then I'm just gonna take my ruler. We wanna make sure we get it as straight as we can. And with that, you'll just Take your pen or your pencil and make a line, just like that. And then I'm just gonna cut down the line. And I fold it in half because then I don't have to cut as much. So, we're gonna go like that. All right, so then we've got our seed tape or our seed strip. And the great thing about this newspaper is it's what we call biodegradable. So when we put this into the ground, it actually disintegrates over time. So it's not harming the environment. So that's why it's important that we use newspaper because this is going to go into the ground. All right, so now we have our seed tape. Next, we are going to prepare our glue. So there's two different ways you can make glue. The important thing is that whatever you use, it needs to be non-toxic. So if you use Elmer's glue, to tape on your seeds, make sure it says non-toxic, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to make it with flour and water. So this is also natural and it won't hurt the environment. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna have your Ziploc bag like this. You're gonna put your two tablespoons of all-purpose flour, just like that. And then you're gonna take a spoon, so just a regular kind of plastic spoon, and you're gonna put one spoonful of water in there, okay? Start with one. You don't want it to be too watery. And what this does is um, the water and the flour will bind together, and it creates a natural kind of glue. So get the air out. And then what you're gonna do is kind of, this is fun, just 
knead it around like this. Try to get all that flour together. I think I'm probably gonna need one more spoon of water. Do we need to thin this water, this glue out, or does is it thick, too thick? Um, it looks a little thick. No, the thick is okay. The thick. Yep. Okay. Yeah, you don't want it too uh, runny. You want to make sure that it um, will stick. All right. So you're gonna need that. So now we've got our natural glue. Okay. So the next thing we're gonna talk about are our seeds. So I purchased two separate seeds. I actually bought these, I believe from Amazon. And then I just went and bought these. These came from the dollar store. And they're two different kinds. So most uh, varieties of sunflowers are very large. So for instance, this one is um, going to grow six to nine feet tall. And you're gonna space these about six inches apart. And we'll talk about that in a second. So these are huge. These are gonna be way taller than you, probably taller than your dad, and probably taller than your mom. So you gotta make sure that we read the package and we make sure we know um, how tall they're gonna get and also how far to space them. Um, so with these, they're gonna have to be spaced about six inches apart. And this is very similar to what's in the book. Cause yes. as you remember, it talked about that they were in like a forest and you seen mom and dad and sister all out in the circle and it was over their heads. Yeah, so if you do plant the big ones, make sure you have enough space for them to grow. This is not gonna be a potted house plant um, that you're gonna put out so or inside or anything like that. Cause it's gonna get very tall. So we need to make sure we have enough space for it. These are very unique. This is a dwarf sunflower. So it's a much smaller sunflower. This is only gonna get about one foot to one and a half feet tall, maybe two. So these are quite smaller. And because they're smaller, they don't need as much space to grow. Um, so these are gonna be placed about three inches apart. So that's how you can know how um, close to plant your seeds. And it's always important, no matter what plants you're planting, um, that you always read the back. You also wanna make sure you're planting them during the right season. Um, so for instance, these actually need a lower temperature to germinate. So it actually is probably a little too warm outside for these smaller ones. But this one right here can germinate at a higher temperature um, of in, you know, for the summertime. So you'd ideally wanna plant these probably more like in April or May. Um, I actually planted some sunflowers and um, just a word of advice, make sure you plant them deep enough. <laughs> they will tell you on the back how, plant, how far to plant them into the ground. I had some sunflower seeds and I don't think I planted them further enough, further enough in the ground and actually the birds came and tried to eat them, which is why only one ended up sprouting. But it is very tall right now. It's about three feet tall on my balcony at my apartment. Um, also, you want to make sure you're using actual seeds. I know we eat sunflower seeds. You might get from the gas station or the grocery store. You don't want to get those. We want to make sure that we're using these kinds of seeds that we buy from Home Depot, Lowe's, any kind of home and garden store, Walmart, the dollar store, that sort of thing. And if you do go online to Amazon or some specialty places, you can find um, these uh, different kinds of sunflowers. They also have different colors, sunflowers, and they're all completely yellow. Um, and some of them are a little bit smaller. So, some fun facts about seeds. Does the sunflowers deter, I mean, um, a specific color have to do with any particular birds? Um, I don't think so. I think all the birds are gonna love the sunflower seeds. And that's the other thing, like in the book, it talked about all those birds right. coming. That will happen, especially once it starts drying out, they get hard and it's more like the sunflower seeds that you would eat. And that's when all those birds. Gotcha are gonna come in. So, so it's gonna attract all kinds of birds. Yes, they are birds too. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do, we talked about spacing. So mine need to be three inches apart and Miss Karen's only need to be um, six inches apart. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ruler again and you're just gonna measure out in the middle however many inches your sunflower seeds need to be spaced and you're gonna put an X. So for mine, I'm gonna measure out three inches, put an X, three more inches and an X. And this is gonna show you where we need to put our seeds. 
So as you can see, I'm really only going to get about three seeds on my piece of tape. And I will say this, if you want to, you can always maybe put two seeds around the X um, just to make sure if one doesn't sprout. What you will need to do though, is if they all end up sprouting, you may wanna let it grow a little bit and then replant it because if they're too close together, they're not gonna have enough space to grow with the roots underneath them. So you could do that if you like, but we're just gonna put one at each of our X's. So Miss Karen is gonna use hers and she's just gonna put just a dab of glue using a toothpick because you really don't need a ton of glue. And then over here, I'm going to use our flour and water concoction. You might have to kind of open it like this. And take my Q-tip and for each X, you're just gonna put a little bit on there. It's a little hard to get out, I'm not gonna lie, there we go. So in this aspect, a little glue goes a long ways. All right, and we're putting these seeds on here with the flower. Miss Kelly, I have a good question for you. Sure. Um, these plants, are these annuals, which means they won't come back every year, or is these perennials, which means they come back every year? Ah, that's a great question. So almost all sunflowers are gonna be annual plants. And like Miss Karen said, that means that you plant them once and then they're gonna die and you'd have to plant them again physically for them to come back. And a perennial is a plant that naturally comes back on its own for at least two years. Different perennials last different amounts of time. So at this, with the sunflower, you're gonna to wanna to plant these in the late spring, so April or May here in Georgia. That's when they're gonna germinate. They're gonna grow throughout the summer and bloom, and then they will probably die back around the first frost of the fall. And a lot of that information does wind up coming on these packets. I don't know if it's on all of them, but on this particular one, it kind of tells you the depth, when to plant them, and when they will sprout, how long it takes, and how long they will last. Yep. So, and you'll also- information on the back of those, don't throw them away. Yeah, absolutely. And um, you can't really see it here, but down here there's actually a map and um, we may talk about this in another lesson, but different areas have different growing seasons. So here in Georgia, it gets, um, it stays hotter a little bit later, so things grow a little bit longer into the year than they would say maybe in the Midwest. Um, and just another little tidbit, to keep these, you could possibly use this as like um, a tag mm -hmm. yeah. by your garden. So maybe you could put it, um, like a popsicle stick? Yep, like put it on a popsicle stick, decoupage it, Mm -hmm. so that it'll hold up in the weather outside. And that way you've got a two part, you've got a name mm -hmm. and you've got your information. So you, don't great idea. so you don't throw it away. Yeah, we may have to try that sometime yep. and make one. That's yep. a great idea. I really like that one a lot. And the good thing about sunflower seeds is you saw in the book, there's tons of seeds. So even though it's an annual and it's not gonna grow back on its own, you can take those seeds out, harvest them and then replant them in the late spring. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so now that we have our seed strip and they are starting to dry, you are gonna go outside. So like I said, you need an area where there's gonna be lots of room and you're gonna um, put this into the soil just like this. And both of these need to be planted at one inch depth into the soil. Now, do we wet these? Um, yes, that's a good idea. You can, but what I would actually do is I wouldn't wet these put before it in the ground. you, yep, I would put it in the ground first and then you're gonna wanna take a watering can and just do a nice deep water onto it and it will get that nice and wet. But if you do it like that, it makes it really kind of hard to work with if you get it wet beforehand. All right, well, we hope you had fun making your seed tape and we will see you next Thursday for our next MG Sprouts lesson. Have a good one.